Hi there! If you're watching this video, you're probably already aware of the phenomenon of gyroscopic precession and how you can predict and calculate the effect by using angular momentum vectors. But no matter how good you get at calculating these vectors, and no matter how many times you do those calculations, you might be left feeling that the spinning wheel demo seems totally amazing and weird, or that these vector explanations are completely unintuitive. I sure did. So I made this video to share how I intuitively understand gyroscopic precession. We're going to start out considering satellites in orbit, but don't worry, we'll be back to the bicycle wheel soon enough. If you've played Kobol Space Program much, this will probably be even easier to understand. So here's a single satellite in a perfectly flat circular orbit. What happens if we push up here and push down here? To be more specific, we're going to push up and down on the satellite as it passes these two points. If you forget that the satellite is in motion and just imagine that its orbit is a giant hula hoop, you would expect the orbit to tilt like this, but that's not what actually happens. Let's think about the satellite again. As it passes this point, we push up on the satellite. Pushing up on the satellite doesn't cause it to teleport upwards and then continue moving in the same direction. It just gets sent flying in a different direction. And if you trace out the path that it takes, the orbit is tilted like this. Now keep in mind that the forces we applied on the satellite were equal and opposite, so they combined to form a twisting force around this axis, but we can clearly see that the orbit was tilted around a completely different axis. Now before we continue, make sure you're completely comfortable with this idea. Pushing up on the satellite here causes the orbit to tilt like this. Feel free to pause the video, rewind, or even go ahead and play Kerbal Space Program until you get the idea. Now, let's look at the classic example of a bicycle wheel suspended from a rope. A bicycle wheel is obviously a solid piece of rubber, but I'm going to replace it with individual balls of rubber. It makes no difference to the end result, but it makes it easier to think about. Gravity is pulling down on the wheel here, and the rope is pulling up here. These forces combine to produce a twisting force, called a torque, trying to twist the wheel this way. Now, this twisting force is totally equivalent to pushing right on the wheel here, and left on the wheel here. Either way, the twisting action is trying to turn the wheel clockwise. Now, we shift our point of view to look at the wheel from above. Does this scene look familiar now? It looks just like our orbiting satellite, except instead of just one satellite, we've got a whole bunch in the same orbit. But once again, this makes no difference. As the rubber balls get pushed up and down, they get diverted into a new path, rotating like this. Now of course, I've made some simplifying assumptions here. In reality, the torque is applied via the bearings in the hub of the bicycle wheel, rather than via magic force arrows, and the force is probably spread out around the hub rather than applied at just two points. But once again, it turns out that none of this makes any difference to the end result. No matter how you apply torque to a rigid body, the end result only depends on the total torque applied. So I think the model I've shown is as good as any, and I hope it's nice and easy to think about intuitively. So that's it. Please do let me know whether or not this video helped with your understanding, and thanks for watching. See you!